Hello everyone, and welcome to another Polybridge 2 build video, where today we'll be covering a level from the second world, which is level 8, split level. It is a level in which you need to bring two vehicles across the gap while avoiding a biplane that goes through it. Now I wanted to create a bit of a personal challenge for this level. First of all, I wanted to solve this with a maximum of 10 roads, which is only about enough to bridge the top car across with a flat road. Second, I wanted to solve this with zero hydraulics, not even ones for timing or delaying purposes. Next, I wanted a bridge that could be reusable, which means I can't use weights that just drop off, I can't use spring cannons, I can't use falling road, etc. This is pretty rare to see being paired with the zero hydraulics challenge, which is why I think this is going to be a really interesting build to tackle. Lastly, along the reusable aspect, I wanted to carry the taxi to its starting position, even though it doesn't turn around the level. This means I have to find a way to drag it back, rather than letting it drive itself back. I will be allowed to use unlimited budget and unlimited materials, with the exception of the roads and the hydraulics though. With all of that in mind, let's begin. So, here I am, trying to recreate the design in small scale before making the much larger final version. Now it may not look like much, but it's a linkage that creates linear movement. Be able to create some sort of ferry system that carries the car across in a box horizontally across the gap. Seems to pretty much work the way I expected, so it's on to the large scale version. First, I built a frame for the ferry bridge to stand over the plane. I then began to figure out how to secure the vehicle in place, which I routed for just a generic box which will be staying for the rest of this video. After that, I began to create the arm the box would be suspended from. Now, it won't be until a long while into the video when I realized that I didn't really need that central arch. Now, you probably are noticing that I'm taking down the original mechanism I've made. Now, that's only because that I'm just currently replacing it with an even larger version after I realized it wasn't going to be going far enough. Now, time to test it. Okay, it definitely needs more reinforcements because it's really not able to carry the weight of the car dropping onto the carriage. Alright, now it holds up, but it's not really going anywhere. Maybe I built this wrong? So I added some temporary roads as a ballast to see if it move, and yeah, never mind, it's actually fine, just needs a little bit more pushing power. Now that it definitely works, it's time for me to make the carriage not swing. To do this, I doubled the mechanism and connected them together so they wouldn't swing in unison. As a result, the beams connecting the twin mechanisms stay perfectly vertical at all times. I can exploit this by connecting anything I want to stay fixed at any specific angle, which in this case was the carriage to any of the vertical beams. It's right around now when I finally realized I didn't need the central metal span placed above the boat. So I removed that, and I placed the beams on two support towers, both suspended in place by cables I strung to the edges of the level. I added a temporary road ballast and got this. Sweet, so now the carriage moves across. So I finally removed the ballast and let the car go. Okay, not so great, uh, it just flops upside down. So I went on to create ramps on either side of the river in which the car would drive down to enter the carriage and then back up the other side to exit the carriage. Now I haven't exactly studied this so much, so I'm not sure what measurements have gone wrong here, but it seems that the carriage was starting to drop a little bit. But hey, it gets the car across. But now I faced a different problem. The mechanism wouldn't stay on the opposite side anymore once the car got off, meaning the ferry would swing back as the plane came across, breaking apart the carriage. I tried many, many different tweaks and modifications to the crane, but to no avail. It seemed that this design wasn't going to work, and it was getting late anyways. So in defeat, I scrapped the design and just went to bed. 
So, it's the next day, and I just got struck with another idea that might just work. Based on this mechanism. Once again, we're back on 507 mechanical movements, and to most people, this may not seem like anything different compared to the last one. Sure, different mechanical linkage, but at the end of the day, it's just producing linear movement, right? Well, not quite. You see, I was thinking about this from the perspective of it being placed sideways. And notice how in order for the mechanism to travel across, the large blue arm center of gravity is lifted upward, meaning the middle would be where there is the highest amount of potential energy. This would mean that the mechanism would prefer being on either side position rather than being in the middle, which is exactly what I needed. So now it turns out I need the metal truss arch span after all, though it was pretty small and flimsy, which I didn't want. So now it's time for bigger triangles. Now that that's out of the way, I've now learned from my previous attempt to be much more careful with my measurements, making sure that everything would stay exactly how I want them. From the center vertical line of the river itself, I drew a line connected to the imaginary center vertical line that goes down the exact middle of the carriage. First, I did this out of steel for scaffolding, which I would lay the fill tool over. Then, I adjusted the fill length and got to bisect the horizontal distance between those two centers. I then drew a straight line upwards from that bisected center and started creating the mechanism. I first made an upside down V shape out of steel, then doubled it up like last time. I then took one of the sides of the V and added it to the top, creating an upside down Y shape. I secured the longer side of the Y together to one rigid arm before building a huge tower that spanned up vertically to connect to the tip of the Y and held it in place by connecting them to the old cable anchors I created in the edges of the level. I then once again created the platform to let the car enter the carriage. Alright, let's test it. And, eh, it, it kind of works, but we're running into the problem in which the blue car doesn't have enough kinetic energy to exert into the system and push the carriage across. Remember that large blue arm I mentioned a while back? Yeah, that weight is now working against us. So I went through a few redesigns, trying to figure out what would work best to lighten up the load of the arm. It took me a while, but eventually I realized that I could use the guiding arm that was at the top of the mechanism to pull the larger arm just a bit to hopefully lighten the load. I added a temporary road piece, placed a temporary bridge for the taxi to cross, and gave it a test. And to my disbelief, it worked! The car went into the carriage, the carriage slid across, stopped on the other side, and when the car turned around and went back to the carriage, it pushed its way back across. Fantastic! Well, now that just made the ability to carry the taxi so much easier. I could just put it in a carriage that hung below the one that the combat car was in, and boom, back and forth for the taxi would be done. Now I did route for a lot of different designs. I first did a rigid one, but it turned out that the taxi's wheels were still in contact with the opponent platform, slowing the whole machine down. So I then tried cable for it to wobble around, and eventually just routed for a spring carriage that would just lift the entire taxi off the ground. After that, we're left with a design that had 13 roads in it. No biggie though. I could just shave off some of the roads by changing the road weight from above to just wood, and lessening the amount of roads needed to let the compact car enter and exit the carriage, leaving with 6 roads for the carriage, and 4 roads for the compact car guiding the parts, and just like that, we're done. So, here's the final mechanism.
Anyways, that's all from me for this video. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button, and if you would like to see more Polyverge content like this in the future, feel free to subscribe. And as always, have a wonderful day.